You can rely on Three Rivers Roofing for all of your residential and commercial roofing needs. Call 706-767-4373 or visit the Three Rivers Roofing GA.com. Three Rivers Roofing, the proof is in the roof. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cigar Store Idiots. Uh, I, of course, am Rob. I got Tyler over here to the uh, immediate right of me. Everybody knows where Tyler is every time. Back once again. Andrew? Hey, still here. Andrew's still here. Chief's still here. Chief's out of quarantine now. Guess he learned his lesson this weekend, or past weekend. on the Partied with some dogs. He partied with some dogs. So, uh, good thing the dogs have something to party about. So, uh, Tyler, it's good to have you back, man. We missed you. I know, man. Uh, not much of a big football talker, but here I am today. Well, we're glad to have you back, man. It's glad to have you back. All right, uh, so let's touch a little bit on uh, college football, SEC, this weekend. Uh, it was fun. It was fun. It was a good it time. It was fun. It was, a, it, was a, uh, it was an eye-opening weekend for us dog fans, no doubt. We realized that the the fella at the at the quarterback position is uh, not really – Played two quarterbacks this weekend. The main guy's not really going to be the main guy. I got a feeling. No, uh, got a little uh, seasoning left to do. But you know, you're not going to see the one of those guys probably no. the rest of the year. Yeah, and if, if you uh, hope because if, you if JT think, can stay healthy, I think yeah. I think yeah. JT was probably healthy last yeah. week. Is yeah, my opinion. Yeah, I do too. I do too. He's, I think they was giving him another week. I do. They almost messed up. I mean, <laughs> I knew. You know, I I was telling some buddies of mine during the Georgia game. I said, you know, he, JT's gonna, he'll start against yeah. Auburn, and sure enough, yeah, defense looked great. Georgia's defense looked great. Well, we knew, that but was we were nice. we were playing Arkansas, but we did you know we did play play pretty well. So, how about how about the more Eagles? Yeah, we won, we won. We looked a little scary at first, but uh, you know maybe got a call or two go our way. Call or two didn't go our way, but wide receiver looks good, man. Let's and, talk about and, that catch. And, and, and yeah, and he, uh, Bo uh, Bo looks good. Quarterback looks good, and our wide receivers look good as they did last year. So uh, Williams looks fantastic, but uh, you know we're not LSU. So yeah. that's thank that's a God good you're thing. not LSU right. after this weekend. Yeah, that was uh, there was no fluke. They just got beat. They did. They did. They got out so much for the air raid. Outplayed. So much for the air raid not working in the SEC. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think Leach said uh, take that. I think uh, I think Mississippi State's going to be a handful for anybody you know, the longer is, the season gets in. Leach has won everywhere he's been. Yeah. You know, and a lot, a lot of people, you know, said oh, that won't work against SEC, SEC defenses. They're too fast, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? Guess what? <laughs> it happened. He hung a lot of points on the board in Baton Rouge. Yeah. And, I don't, you know, everybody's going to say, well, it's not the same LSU team. Well, they, they've still got a lot of talent. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of speed on yeah, that team. there's tons of talent yeah, on that team. Of course, they'll never have a – I don't think anybody may never have a team like we saw last year of LSU. They had a, you know, unbelievable quarterback and just NFL talent all over the field. But yeah. There's still a lot of talent on that field. And Leach come into Baton Rouge and just hung some points on him. LSU was chasing him the whole game. Hey, I mean, he kind of embarrassed him. Yes, he did. He did. He very much did. Saw in few, Baton Rouge. I saw, saw a few videos uh, this week of some uh, unhappy LSU fans throwing uh, <laughs> beer bottles through their flat screen was, TVs. Yeah, it was bad. It was, and, you it was know, a little wild. And I tell you, one of the best games <laughs> of the weekend was on that, Barstool. That, yeah. That, yeah. That Tennessee South Carolina game was fun. Yeah. That was a fun game to watch. That was a shootout. That was a shootout. And I thought South Carolina was going to come out and beat them, but they didn't. Well, let's step uh, let's step down and talk about another conference. Uh, big uh, big upset. Oklahoma took it in the oh chops against uh, Kansas, Kansas State. State. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, you know, where was that game played? Do you know? It was in Oklahoma. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. See, Kansas State is a really hard place to play, so I could understand it more if it was at K State. I remember Auburn traveling there that not too many years ago, and we barely got there with a win and uh, against it. K State team that had no business even playing with us, but K State has always been a tough place to play for whatever reason. But in Oklahoma, Oklahoma, I know it was it was it was rough. It was rough. Wow. I'm not not a big Sooners fan, so I, it didn't hurt my feelings a bit. Well, I don't really care either way, but I like <laughs> to see them get out of the way. Yeah, you know, just get out of the way. Yeah. So, and then we got one this weekend. Yeah, uh, Georgia and Auburn. Yeah, you know, and going into this game, you feel like it's the end of the season already. You're like, God, it's yeah, already always, all, it's, it's already it's already all Georgia time. It's, <laughs> it's almost season's almost over already. But 
you know, after the, after this weekend, it'll just be going into week three. We may have to cook turkey and dressing anyways, <laughs> <laughs> just because. It's it just doesn't feel a, right. It's going to be an interesting game. It is. It's it going to be a very interesting game. It'll be interesting to see what uh, George quarterback does. Auburn, they are what they are. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if we have the defensive line to stop Georgia's run. I really don't. I don't know, man. It, it's going to be. It's always a good game. It is. It's always a good game. Not always a good game in Athens. Yeah. In yeah. Athens, it tends to get ugly. And, and, and until Gus proves he can beat Georgia, I for I do not buy that we go into Athens and win because Gus he can beat Alabama like we yeah. discussed with Rusty the other day. Mm-hmm. He can beat Alabama, but he can't beat Georgia. I don't even think he can beat a above average Georgia team. I just think this this season uh, it's twenty twenty. Anything can happen. I agree, but I have no faith in Gus against Georgia. Well, against cra- Georgia, everybody else. How, I don't how crazy would it be to see uh, MSU playing Clemson for the national championship? Oh, that would be. You know what? If anybody besides Auburn, I'm jumping on the bandwagon. I love Leach, man. Yeah, Leach I've, is awesome. I've always liked Leach, and I liked him when he was at Texas Tech. I liked him when he was at Washington State. I've always been a big Leach fan, so I'm. I would love to see him play for the national championship. It would be great. All right, so we're going to jump. Uh, the Atlanta Braves start playoff season tomorrow. Thank God. Uh, Cincinnati. Somebody can talk about I know. <laughs> I don't watch football, but, um, you know, my favorite thing to come out of football is all the, like, the, the funny memes and the videos of, of angry fans just crow hopping white claws into their TVs. <laughs> yeah. Like, like you're talking about the LSU guy. Yeah. That's all I've got on football. Yeah. Angry fans, that's it. Well, I'm an angry fan tomorrow because their first pitch is at noon. Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm not gonna be home at noon. I will, I will, I'm getting my hair cut at noon. What the hell? Yeah, they're playing at noon, and yeah. I think it's on like FS1 yeah. or some. Okay, it's I probably wait, one of those. Get, you're I, getting a haircut. I am. You better quit cutting. Yeah, <laughs> it's not gonna come back. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. There's not much more to cut off of there. <laughs> hey, Tyler, uh, did you, did I hear it? Did I hear it right? You got a place to live. Yeah, you that's place true. to live. Okay. Yeah, I got a place to live with my luscious locks. <laughs> <laughs> luscious locks. But right. yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty upset this at noon. I mean, come yeah. on, man, it's major league, it's playoffs, and you're gonna put it at noon are on we, a Wednesday? Are we getting out of the first round? No. So you're you're saying you're saying now we're not getting out of the first round against Cincinnati? I don't think so. Oh, man, I don't even want to drink the Kool Aid because every I, I, time I, I feel like we're good about it. It's like what the hell just happened? It, it's over for real, Rob. You know? I, Rob, I, I've been a I've been a Brace fan my whole life. How many, I, I, how I, many I know times how the story I, goes? Yeah, how many times do I have to fool and lie to myself? Yeah, I'm not going to lie to myself anymore. If we make it out of the first round, great, whatever. But Reds come into this series hot. Yeah, the Braves are hot. They're scoring a ton of runs. I get it, but the pitching gets a lot better in the playoffs. Yeah, and uh, the Reds are hot, man. Yeah. God, you know, and we don't have pitching. We have two guys that I have faith in. I think the Braves would probably give me more broken promises than uh, the heavy set girl at the bar at three o'clock in the morning when she she gets a, a ride home from so a fella. Is Max pitching tomorrow? Uh, yes, Max is pitching. Tomorrow. Did you ever tell you a story about me drinking a beer with him? Oh, no, with him and his dad, not him and his dad. His dad, not him. No, uh, so I'm at the cigar bar and uh, went on Broad Street there and. Uh, this guy beside me, he's got this laptop out on the bar. I kept looking over at him, and I was wondering what he was doing, but he was looking at some kind of baseball thing, and I got to talk to him. He was from San Diego. So we get to talking. And I said, what are you doing in, What are you doing here if you're from San, San Diego? He goes, well, I brought my wife in, flew her out here. We're going to see her son pitch tomorrow. I was like, really? And this is when he was with the Rome Braves, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, he went on to tell me, he said, man, just be patient. He goes, there's so much talent coming up with, with Max. He goes, just be patient. But yeah, so but and I thought, who's Max Freed? I don't even know who that is. And he's right. I mean, all those guys that that came up together. I mean, you got Freed, you got Soroka. Yep. I mean, he's, there's a there's a plethora of pitching. Yeah, he just he went. Matter of fact, he turned his laptop toward me and started showing me these guys. This guy, this guy's this. This guy's this. This guy just done this. This guy's done this. He goes, they're all in an organization. He said, just be patient. But we got to stay healthy. We, we do have to stay healthy. Our pitching is not healthy. That's what scares. That's why I think we lose the first round. I'm making a bold statement. I'm saying right now that the Braves and the Yankees are going to the World Series. You heard it here first. It's happening. And we're going to lose to the Yankees. (laughs) That just just screwed us. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, everybody knows whoever I'm rooting for, uh, if you want to win a lot of money, 
Put your money on the team that I'm against. Yeah, bet on your odds. Bet. Don't bet on the team that I choose because you're 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 destined to lose. I mean, I so. I hate to even say it because I want the Braves to win so bad, but I just don't know if we got the pitching for the playoffs. Yeah, God dang, I hope so. That's what scares me. All right, next thing we're going to get into real quick. Uh, we got a care package from Rep Sports. They sent us a bunch of Ray's energy drinks. We're going to give a couple of uh, uh, reviews on a couple. Uh, we got Voodoo. Voodoo, voodoo raised child. voodoo the, for the voodoo child, and we got the good old American uh, let me, Apollo. Let me uh, beat my chest and crow like a rooster, Apollo. So we're gonna get both of these a shot. All right, sugar free, sugar free, yeah, sugar free, zero calories, and the voodoo is a limited edition flavor. So man, golly, let me get all that. So all right, let's uh, pour these up. This is Apollo. Did we get vodka for these? No, wait. <laughs> we don't. Not this time. Sorry. Kids, what are we kids don't drink. And oh, wait. I need a swig of the Apollo. Oh, my bad. Where the Apollo you that? Yep. Don't drink in podcast. I can tell you that it's uh, these guys don't put artificial colorings in their nope, drinks. Clear as a bell. Clear as a bell. Yep. Clear as a bell. Just like vodka. All right. Here's, all right, I'm, going all right I'm going with Apollo first. I'm yep. going with Apollo first. One Apollo. swig of Apollo. Mm. It's not bad. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, it tastes, it tastes, tastes, like, tastes pretty good. It's like flashbacks from um, elementary school. Uh, mega missiles out of the ice cream box. <laughs> oh my god, it does taste like yeah, that. The, the red, white, and the blue red, white, and blue popsicle. popsicle. Yeah, it, it tastes does. Like a bomb Man, pop. A, bo- hey. a rocket pop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Rocket pop. It, it tastes like a rocket pop. All right, that's that's, a, that's that, quite good. That's a go for me. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give that a four. Uh, a four out of four stars. I was about to say four out of ten. I was about to say it's better than four out of ten. No, nah, it's four stars for me. Good. Yeah, four good. star being best. It's good. It tastes. It tastes like a uh, rocket pop. We don't exactly do, what it tastes like. We don't do five stars here because I don't like odd numbers. I will say it's better than other energy drinks I've tried that have attempted that flavor. Great branding. Looks good. Lady Liberty. Red, white, and blue. I like it. Red, white, Apollo. Red, white, and blue. It's a win. For me. Right. It is good. All and, right. In honor of today's episode, let's yeah. try out the voodoo. We're going with the voodoo in honor of the voodoo child. Oh yeah. All right. Here we what, go. There's a tie-in. Yeah. Here we go. I take some orange in there, maybe. Maybe yeah, orange yeah. cream. A little, it's a little bit like of a, a cream citrus. Sick, cream sickle. I think it's a cream sickle. Cream sickle flavor. Oh, 100 percent. Yep, cream sickle. All right, I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna give that a four. <laughs> That's good. Because right. I like cream sickle. That gonna, is we're really gonna, good. We're gonna get letters from Rays. They're gonna be like, "It's not cream. It's not cream sickle, <laughs> you dumbasses." <laughs> It's cream sickle to me, dude. Um, it's pretty freaking. I may have good. burned my taste buds out. Yeah, it's it's. it's Does anybody it's else want more? I, I, let's yeah. Whatever, Andy, man. do you want some more? I like to have some more of that. Apollo. I want some more of this. I want some more Apollo. You go. You got me excited. I'm about pouring up the rest of the voodoo. Apollo's good. Yeah, this stuff is good. Nobody else wants any more. Go, take go it. ahead, man. It's, it's, drinking drinking it it's good. But today's podcast is fueled by Ray's energy. Today's podcast <laughs> fueled by Ray's. Energy. It's pretty good. It's good. Pretty good. It's really good. Raise and energy. I can't feel my legs. Skin. For zero sugar, though. Zero sugar. Zero that's, calories. That's huge. Zero artificial coloring. Also, 300 milligrams of caffeine in these puppies. So, don't consume if you're under the age of 18. Mm. Suggested. Or unless nobody's looking. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you see all those little kids on the t-ball field running around with energy drinks around? Yeah. yeah, Tyler probably Tyler once drank a monster before a wrestling tournament no, and almost I killed did. him as a child. You gave me your you poured up your rock star juiced, yeah, rock star juiced in his Gatorade, dude. Talk about some performance enhancing. Uh, hey, you do what you got to do. I almost killed him. I almost mm-hmm. killed him, Matt, there. dude. I was like, I was having heart palpitations. I was turning blue. I had asthma, but um. Came out there like the ultimate warrior. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and it was short lived. <laughs> yeah, it was short lived. It's great. Cardiac arrest comes <laughs> sneaking up on me. Probably uh, did not go down as one of the greatest parenting moments of my life. Yeah, but we, uh, we yeah. live and learn. But that's but you why know. you don't drink rock star energy and I'm, you drink bro, rays. Bro, you were the that's first. Right. You were the first. We bounced shit off y'all. Yeah, that's we right. did. Y'all, <laughs> we were learning how to be parents. Yeah, only if, if I had you, a raise you, energy back then, right? Yeah, no, Zero kidding. sugars. I'd Zero been good sugars. You would have been fine. So tonight we're going to cover, I'd say, uh, it's one of the biggest um, kind of phenomenon deals in entertainment and music. Uh, We're going to go over the 27 Club. Uh, 27 Club, big pop culture, musical 
like a uh, huge, huge story that people try to cover with books, movies. Um, There's a lot of mystery, a lot of mystery about surrounded it. about it. Uh, and, and if you're not familiar with the 27 Club, it's these up and coming artists, uh, musicians, and actors who uh, had a, a skyrocket to stardom. And they just checked and, out a little. And too just early. checked out a little early at 27. So at 27 years old, uh, for whatever reason, drugs, alcohol, car accidents, murder, the devil, the devil. If you're Robert Johnson, uh, but uh, these things happened. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know if that's the devil or it was a. It was a mad. Uh, it, it was a mad hubby. Yeah, it was a could uh, be. Yeah. Get your hands off my woman. Nothing's more dangerous than a jealous man. Nothing. Oh, well, I don't know. A jealous woman is probably a little more dangerous. So well, it's crazier. There's a difference between crazier and this is dangerous. true. So we're going to touch on kind of some of the some of the main people that that passed away due to this uh, phenomenon. Um, the other thing, uh, and and there's in in when I started looking into this. And I know we all talked about it. You know, you always hear the main people. You know, you got Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Jim Morrison, Kurt Cobain, uh, Brian Jones, uh, Amy Winehouse. These all are, 27. These are all 27 that we all, you know, are familiar with, with music. But if you go look into it a little deeper, there's a list of 75 people that dates back all the way to Robert Johnson in 1938. So, um, you know, you got artists, uh, actors, uh, musicians, composers. It's a, it's a gigantic list of people. So we're only going to hit on the ones that pretty much everybody are familiar with. Uh, and then I'll, and I'll kind of go through some that I thought was a little interesting that I didn't even know had passed away. Uh, some of the, some young actors. So, uh, you know, we take a look at it. Uh, and like I said, it's, you know, you're looking at musicians, artists, um, you're looking at actors. Um, you know, Did you say Jim Morrison, Jim Morrison. Yeah. 27. 27. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you got, it's just a, just a mystique, a dark cloud that's, that's, cover, that's covered over these, these very talented young people. Uh, and, uh, in some shape or fashion, some sad, tragic way, they lost their lives. And like I said, you know, they're, they're the peak of their career. Uh, and then, and then they're just gone. So. Right. Yeah. So. And, and, and some people that were, Famous to other people, but not famous to me. Right. And, you know, I read about it, and you read about a guy like the uh, the artist. What was his name? The uh, anyway, Jay Z had sang about him in several of his songs. His name was Gene Michael Basquette, maybe. Yeah, he's an artist. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 you, so, you know, so Jay Z and uh, Jay Z and everybody would even sing about him and their songs and stuff. And you know, I just wasn't familiar with him. Yeah. yeah he out, I know he hung out with Andy Warhol. Yeah. This guy was a uh, he was a he was an African American uh, artist. Uh, he he spent a lot of his time. Uh, he was working on social injustices and things like that. He did a lot of street paintings. Uh, he he was. I mean, he was. This guy was ahead of his time as far as art goes. I mean, he was. He was very well known in the community, uh, in the in the inner city community. Um, this guy, you know, he was known as a neo expressionist. Uh, he he kind of focused on wealth and poverty. Um, and he, uh, attacked, uh, you know, attacks on power structures and systems of race. He was, he was, you know, he was a man of the people. Uh, and, uh, actually when he passed away and this is, this kind of goes with, with, with artists that, you know, you're not famous or rich until you're dead. This guy actually had a painting. It was a black skull and it had red and yellow rivets in it. Uh, and it sold at Sotheby's for $110.5 million. Yeah. So it sold, you know, after his death. So, but yeah, uh, and he died of a heroin overdose. Sure did at 27 years old. That will do it. Yeah, Harris, heroin got most of these guys. Honestly, yeah, this is the sad part. Well, before the days of heroin, <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my favorite blues artists. Um, not wrong to say, one of the best ones to ever do it. Quite possibly, some of the first ones to ever do it was Robert Johnson. The first. Um, he's influenced me a lot in my music. I play guitar. I'm a big fan of the blues. I love it all. He he pretty much laid down the groundwork for rock and roll as we know today. Born in Hazelhurst, Mississippi. So Robert Johnson was a sharecropper. He, uh, he, he never really had a father figure in his life. And uh, him and his mother ran from town to town um, just being run off and things. Only two photos of this man, and there's no footage till this day. No footage of Robert Johnson, and only two known photos. And um, 
They find out more and more about him through death certificates. Uh, he died in 1967. No, sorry. <laughs> His death certificate was found in 1967. Caught Hoffy. Yeah, I know. And uh, they discovered from that that they discovered his mother and father's name. So Robert Johnson died at the age of 27. And Supposedly and, he made a deal with the devil to be able to play the guitar. Yeah. yeah. As well as he did, correct? Correct. It's true. And I'll tell you, anybody that plays any 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 famous person that you hear play the guitar, uh, whether it be blues, rock and roll, uh, even even gospel, uh, it's all in there and it, it all came from that man. That man created that sound and that's that's what we know is, is the blues and rock and roll today. I mean he's he's been ripped off more times than a than a stereo knob in a uh, <laughs> yeah. in an old Ford Fairlane, you know. He's, I mean, it's guy. He he did it all, and and people, you know, music was created because of him. And that's why a lot of people said that you know he made a deal with the devil because his music was so it lived on forever. Nobody, right? Nobody heard that. They yeah. say that um, he would play in bars and stuff. Well, he always played on curbsides, and he would make nickels and dimes through doing that. But they, uh, he said that in order for him to make more money. And make his music full time that they would play in what they call juke joints. And um Yeah, so through the juke joints, they play music. Um and he found his end. Right, that is true. He found his end in the juke joint. But um what it was is in the churches there was only women attending the churches at this time. And the pastor, the reverend, not making any money. Right on the donations, and what is making a lot of money is these juke joints, right? So all the men staying up late all night, they're not going to wake up early Sunday morning to go to the church. They're all staying up all night at the juke joint, listening to the blues, rock and roll, the devil's music is what the preacher had called it, and that's where it came from. That's why the Southern Baptist uh, called rock and roll the devil's music. That's right, yeah. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. So the one, the kind of the ones I want to touch on, uh, you know, I, you got Jim Morrison. I mean, Jim Morrison was the lead singer of the Doors. Uh, you know, Jim Morrison was an American poet. Uh, you know, he, he known as the Lizard King or Mister Mojo Rising, and uh, this man would walk down the street and people would throw him drugs, and he he wouldn't put them in his pocket and save them for later. He actually would take them right then and there. That's right. Uh, so many so many videos of Jim, uh, you know, in during concert, uh, he passed out almost probably dead, laying on the on the stage while the concert's still going. That's terrible. Uh, he he, uh, but, but man, I love the Doors, and uh, and and again, you know, they're they're at the peak, they're they're on the top of their game, and. Uh, you know, and then Jim, you know, tragically passed away. Uh, he uh, he pretty much OD'd. Uh, and there's some conflict in the uh, in the medical report uh, that he uh, OD'd or he had a heart attack. But um, you know, they're saying that he choked on his own vomit. So Man, it's amazing he didn't die before twenty seven. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, really. I mean, if you go back and even if you watch the movie The Doors, which I think most people have seen, that especially our age. Yeah. I mean, it was a great movie. It was. Val Kilmer did an excellent job. Val Kilmer did, did. an unbelievable job. A better Jim Morrison than he was a Batman. Yeah, but he was also a good Doc Holliday. So. <laughs> he was a really good Doc. Yeah, Val Kilmer had some, <laughs> right. had some really good roles. But, uh, yeah, it's amazing. As, as wild as his life was and as much drugs as he took in, it's amazing he made it to 27. Yeah. It's but, he amazing. Had be, but he had to be part of that club, so he yeah. don't know. Right. It's amazing that a lot of these guys made it to 27. Right. It's just so weird that 27 is the number. They, they I mean, they live their life so on. hard. I mean, you go back, you take a look at, uh, you know, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, everybody knows Jimi Hendrix, huge uh, electric guitar innovator. Um, also you know, known to take tons, tons and tons of, of Tons of psychedelics, tons of LSD. Care. He didn't care. He just took it all. Uh, and, uh, unfortunately, you know, at the age of 27, he met his demise. Uh, he, he died of, uh, he actually choked on his own vomit as well. Uh, he had took a handful of sleeping pills and drank a bottle of wine before he went to sleep and he never woke up. A crap ton. Yeah. Almost yeah. like a suicide. It sounds like, yeah. I mean, cause he took a lot, you know, I th if, and you, if you think about it, even, you know, we just went to the country music hall of fame and, uh, Hank Williams is one of my favorites. Uh, in, in Hank Williams had even said that, uh, you know, people want to hear somebody, seen uh you know from the heart and these a lot of these musicians they had rough lives they lived a rough life yeah they did and uh they they 
that's the way they express themselves through, uh, you know, through their music. And so there was a lot of pain there. And, and once the music wasn't there and, and there wasn't a crowd to play for, it was either, it was so overwhelming for them. They couldn't, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't comprehend what it was like to be famous and be wanted by all these people. And a lot of them committed suicide, you know, and that, and, and you also got to know that you got to think about somebody like Hank Williams senior. When he traveled around playing, I don't know, wherever he played, you know, whether it was a big concert or small places, he didn't travel in luxury. No. It's not like today. I mean, no. that, that had to be rough on the body. Yeah. I mean, so he's not flying around in jets or nice buses and all those things. I mean, it was, it was hardcore. Yeah, it's just scraping together all you have. You're nickel and dime. Just make it to, to the same. next place. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Eating That's these right. little diners and, you know, sleeping, you know, driving all night and sleeping all day, getting up and, you know, taking whatever to wake you up. And playing all night and staying up all night partying yeah. and then uppers going to and the downers, next place. Uppers yeah. and downers. Yeah. Uppers and downers. I've watched a lot of interviews with people out on the road, and it's like, um, you know, why do you play music? What do you do it for? And, um, you know, are you, are you playing these shows for your own enjoyment? And they just kind of laugh, you know, like they're playing these shows because it's all they have. They they get paid to do it, you know, that that's their only income. And playing their shows determines whether or not they're going to get some food while they're out on the road or not, huh. so... You got a, and you know, another one you take a look at. There's, there's, uh, you know, we got two ladies uh, that were, they were on the top. Um, Janice Joplin, huge. Uh, you know, everybody loved Pearl back in the day. Um, you know, she was electric on the stage. She had a, you know, powerful, soulful voice. So many good songs. I mean, her, Bobby McGee, Peace of My Heart, yeah. Cry Baby. My favorite was Mercedes Benz. That's right. I, I uh, think it's my favorite. Yeah, it was my favorite. So, but I mean, she, she was another one, dude. She just, she, she used up every bit of whatever was in that body. Uh, and it, 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 you know, she went hard. She did. She did. She was, she went a, hard. She was a big fan of the Jack Daniels. And, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately at the age of 27, the heroin got her. So yep. she, she had a drug overdose of heroin. And then another one of my favorites, you know, talking about female voices. Uh, I love Amy Winehouse, man. She, I could listen to her sing. Uh, she could sing happy birthday or, or her ABCs, but I mean, she has such a phenomenal voice and she just, it, it's just kind of haunting to hear her sing. And, and even before she died and now, especially when she's passed away, it's there used to be one of her concerts. She used to come on TV quite a bit. And this that, is when she was still alive. Yeah. I know which one you're talking you about. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. It was a pretty small venue. Yep. Used to come on all the time. Yep. That was so great. Was it an unplugged? It seems like it was an unplugged. I think it was unplugged, like but that. they wore it out. Yeah. And I watched it every time yeah. because it was so great. Cause you, her voice was just yeah. She'd give me cold. She was so I, different than yeah, everybody else. It was, it was, and that's the thing with most of these artists that we're talking about. They were innovators. They yeah. were the like they. Nobody did what they did. Right. They were the the thing. You know, nobody sings like Janis Joplin. Nobody sings like Amy Winehouse. Nobody sang like Jim Morrison. Nobody sang like Jim Morrison. Nobody played the guitar like uh you know like Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson. He was the first. He was to the do first. It. So. Yeah. Uh, and Nobody then, had a seven string guitar till Robert Johnson came yeah. along either. Giant, giant hands. That's what they said. He had gigantic hands, and he was just made right. to, to. Well, they said that he was made to work in the fields, or he was made to play the guitar. And yeah, so he chose not to work in the field anymore. And so, uh, back then, that's really all you. That's had all he had. Man. That's all he had. He met at the crossroads and said, "Yeah, he met Mr. Cro- Mr. Devil." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's make a deal. Let's make Apparently, a deal. The I'm tired of working in these it, fields. Right. The legend tells it that. Robert Johnson met the devil at the crossroads and the devil's hands reached down from the sky and he says, I'll tune your guitar. The legend was he tuned Robert Johnson's guitar. He said, I'll give you this guitar, but your soul is mine. So Robert made the deal with the devil and he took the guitar. Sure enough, died at age 27. Because they, they, they came back and said, you know, nobody can play the, learn to play the guitar that well that fast. Right. It was just like a, it was a fun And that's why everybody believed it. Yeah. Yeah, because before he was playing in the juke joints, uh, they ran him off because he was so terrible, saying that they were afraid he was going to break a string or something like yeah. that. But uh comes back a year later, a little over a year later, and uh, he's the best, you know, best to ever do it. Made and everybody's, really everybody's yeah. in shock. And they so, said that it's impossible for somebody to have learned as much as he did in that short amount of time mastered it yeah in a year. i don't know tyler west is pretty good at the guitar oh, man. learning learning 
super fast at a very early age. Right. Yeah. So in case any, <laughs> in case you guys don't know, Tyler actually plays our intro. That's right. In our in that our that is true. Yeah. Right. So he did a good. It's job. an original. It's an original. So take, take that YouTube. I'll, yeah. I'll, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm great. I'm not. I just play power chords, man. That's simple. Whatever. That's the cheap way to do it. He's so full of crap. I play some Nirvana songs, and my dad thinks I'm amazing. So I'm gonna roll with it. That's yeah. okay. Well, it's funny. Number just, one in my pops' book. Yeah. <laughs> so so we're gonna. We're, of course, uh, uh, Kurt Cobain. You know, we lost Kurt at 27. And Kurt was one of my favorites. I mean, he absolutely. Uh, when when Nirvana came out, I remember the first time I heard Nirvana. I was driving in my car. And it came on 99X, mm-hmm. Atlanta radio station. Do you remember what song it was? Uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Well, I, yeah, I imagine that was one yeah. of the first ones the, to yeah, be on yeah, the radio. That, was, yeah, that, that put them on the map. Right. Sure. Yeah. So I remember when I heard that, I called my cousin Jason, and I was like, have you ever heard it? Because we were digging on Pearl Jam. And I called Jason, and I was like, hey, man, have you ever heard of Nirvana? And he was like, I just heard it yesterday. It's unbelievable. I said, I mean, it blew me away. It was unlike anything I had ever heard. You were probably the biggest Nirvana fan that I know. I was. I freaking love I but still I mean, am to this day. Yeah, you know? but you, you know, like me, I like Nirvana, but I, and a lot of my friends like Nirvana, but yeah, I don't think anybody I know likes Nirvana like you do. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and you know, and it's, they, you go back to say, you know, Nirvana, like Kurt was like a, he was the voice of Generation X. Like he, he was, uh, you know, front man for Nirvana, voice of Generation X. He's a grunge god. He, but he was also surrounded by so much talent. He was, he, yeah, he, he really was. I, I mean, mean, think I about mean, Dave Grohl was amazing. Grohl was just, Chris Novoselic is great. Yeah, I mean, that, sitting back there on like it drums all and just everything they did worked, you know, and, and, and the really just the whole scene Kurt was surrounded by yeah, coming up. They, uh, Nirvana, King, they King were, Buzzo, yeah. the Melvins, and all that. Yeah, they yeah. were. I mean, I mean, Nirvana was the death of hair metal. It was the death of it hair was. metal. And one of the funniest stories I I, I remember was uh, was it Janie Lane from Warrant? They were reworking their contract with Geffen, and uh, said that he walks in, and uh, when they walk in behind the and, and forgive me the the producer. His desk was always this picture of Guns N' Roses, this huge picture of, of Guns N' Roses the band makes together. And he walks in, and there's a there's <laughs> that picture had been taken down, Uh-oh. and it was a picture of Nirvana. Oh, mm-hmm. and Jenny Lane looked at I forgot who it was he looked at, and he said uh, he's like well, this isn't good for us, this isn't good. So when they heard Nirvana, he said they knew that they all you know, quote unquote they knew they were fucked, and that their music career was pretty much about over. So. And then once Nirvana came on, you know, everybody's trying to copy that sound. Uh, they yeah. tried to, and music changed. They changed music forever. Well, they did. There was no more, you know, the Poisons and the all those bands that kind of just went, because they were hot, man. Yeah. Poison, man. You, yeah. you turned on oh, MTV, man. that's all you yeah. saw. Yeah. And it was like six different Poison videos. And, they, you know, they were good. I mean, they were what they were. But uh, it changed completely with Soundgarden and Nirvana yeah. and all those great bands, you know, Chris Cornell. And, and right. it's just amazing. You never voices. forget, like, uh, it was, uh, and then smells like Sp- uh, Teen Spirit video came on, and you watch it, and it's, it's like the anti-American um, kid video. Yeah. So we didn't, you know, with the paper. I mean, in the song, it, it just just punches you right in the fucking chest. I mean, you yeah. can't help but just like it's a great song. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's iconic, and it'll be one that you know that people try to build on for years and try to emulate and, yeah. and make I mean, it's still played to this day. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's oh yeah. Still on the radio. And I, and I remember when Kurt had he had been gone for a while. And, uh, man, music just was, music was in a bad, you know, bad shape. It's just, there really wasn't any, the bands just, I don't know, man, it just, music wasn't the same. And they released, I think two years after Kurt had died, uh, they, they released, you know, you're right. And that came out. And I remember thinking, I was like, that's better than anything that's been put out in the past two years. There's nothing to even come close yeah. to this song. This man's been dead for two years, you know? So, uh, I think, uh, music creativity kind of took a back seat and everybody just was didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go from there, you know, and, you know, luckily, you know, we talked about Dave Grohl and he came out with the Foo Fighters and, and I feel like who I know, love. Yeah. I love the I, Foo Fighters. I think yeah. Foo Fighters is, is probably one of the last true rock and roll bands that yeah, we have right great. now. So they're amazing. They're great. And okay, let me ask you this since you're such a big Nirvana fan and there's a lot of, uh, speculation about core bank. Okay. Kurt's Courtney death. Love. Yeah, I can't even talk. Yeah. Uh, which isn't good when you're on a podcast. <laughs> uh, Me neither. At least they can't see what we look like. I know, right? <laughs> uh, what do you think about his death? I'll be honest with you. I think Kurt uh, 
he suffered with a lot of social anxieties. Didn't he have a stomach issue as well? He had a very yeah. severe stomach issue, a lot of stomach pains his whole life. He was always in pain. I think when he when he he started uh, flirting around and using heroin, uh, heroin took away that pain that he probably had his whole life. He yep. had even said that, and he and he yeah. literally, uh, and, and I can kind of give you a little bit of of what it's like to to live in pain. Like I, before I had uh, my hip surgeries, I was in pain constantly my whole life, and once I had my surgeries, I I didn't experience pain anymore, and I didn't know what that was like because I experienced pain my whole life. I never did not live a day without pain and you don't know what it's like to not live without pain until you don't live without it. Right. And so I could see, uh, with him taking something to make that pain go away would, I mean, Jesus Christ, why Just, would you want to live in pain yeah. every single day? Right. So, and of course, once you, once you start taking heroin, your, your, your comeback rate is not, not very, you know, your odds are stacked against you. And it's that, really so. unfortunate that, um, it's those substances yeah. that, that does that to people. I think, I don't think Courtney had him killed. I, I think, I, I, I agree with that. I, I, I think that he was so, such a miserable person and yeah. he, he was, he was so let down with himself. He was overwhelmed with his stardom. He couldn't hand, stardom. He couldn't handle it. Um, and, and the, and the heroin had him. I think it had him and, and he didn't know another way out and he didn't have a support group around him to, to get him out of that. And even, even so you can't, you can't help people that want to help themselves. Right. You can't raise an adult. I'm glad you said that. And I think I think he did. I think he did take his own life. I no, really do. I'm glad you said Honestly that. Because do. I don't. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, no, no, don't. I don't believe that. Courtney now, needs now, do I, a bit. Do I like Courtney? I'm not. I'm not really a big fan of Courtney. I just. I just really don't really care for. Her. I, I, I think it's crazy how many songs Kurt potentially wrote for Courtney that she and, sang and Hole. for Hole. Yeah. Because yeah. just like uh, I play guitar, I know a little bit about music and and how the puzzle pieces go together and. Um, just the chords that are used in, in Hole's music, it's just something Kurt would have done. It, it's some it's it's the yeah, it's, approach he would have yeah, took to he, writing a song. I don't hate their music. Yeah. I don't I don't no, hate yeah. I don't hate all Hole songs. And uh some some of the chords, like uh, if you throw in another chord or or something like that, it's one off from a Nirvana song. It's I, it's that close to I a can, Nirvana song. I can song. tell you a lyric that says the sky was made of amethyst and all the stars look like little fish. Yeah, she didn't write that. No, Courtney no. Love couldn't she come did, up with that. She couldn't pull that out of her ass if she tried. So she didn't write that. So right, but doll parts and all that. Doll I mean, they were good yeah, too, man. Yeah, now, I, I don't. I don't think he wrote doll parts. No, I wasn't a fan of that one. I, you but know, her hard stuff. I think he wrote. I think he wrote every bit of that 100%. and gave it to her on a silver platter. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Just that's why I have a hard. T- that's why I have a hard time believing she had anything to do with it. Yeah, I. Don't, I, I don't think. I, I. I'm glad you said that. I, yeah, I don't think she. I don't. Think there's she a lot of diehard. Nirvana fans yeah, think that. I mean, people, you know, people have their opinions on things, I, I and, think that's, that's and again, there. that's my opinion. But I don't think she got him killed. I don't either. She was making too much money living with him. He was a <laughs> well. I mean, let's and, be honest. And well, and he was a father. They, they were living a life. He was a father of their child. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Which have you seen pictures of Francis? She's she's eerily looks I mean, like Kurt. She eerily. Yeah. I mean, it's she's it's almost. Spit an image. Of I Kurt. need to look that up. I haven't yeah. looked. She's she's pretty girl though. Is she? She's pretty. Yeah, she's pretty. Uh, not saying Kurt was pretty, but she's she's a she's a pretty <laughs> version of Kurt without the goatee right, and right. the greasy hair. Right. Her she's, face is yeah, pretty she's chiseled pretty. like Kurt's was. Yeah, but she you can see him like you can't. There's no denying it. You can see him. Well, it's better that she looked like Kurt than <laughs> than Courtney. Yeah, I Courtney's agree. a. I agree. So you know, and then you know, unfortunately, like I said, we lost Kurt at 27. You know, of a, a self inflicted gunshot wound, uh, suicide. Uh, induced, a massive injection of heroin induced before. with a massive yeah induced with a massive yeah. uh, injection of heroin so yeah people yeah. were saying and the reason people say that kurt didn't kill himself is because they were saying that you couldn't take that much heroin and function enough to shoot a gun yeah yeah well i just heard a story the other day of a man that took uh how many was it he took a day 15 15 laura set was it laura sets or percocets, yeah, percocets. Uh, it's, it's a it's someone that 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 we know that was addicted to drugs, I think still is, and uh, functioning on a 15-a-day Percocet habit. 
if I take one of those, I, I mean, I've taken that before I go to bed, and, and I wake up at twelve o'clock the next day, <laughs> wondering feel where like I I've am. Been in a, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I feel like I've been in a, a washing machine. I have to be yeah. careful what I take at night because so, I get up early and it's so tough. These, yeah, so the, so somebody, you know, so you can't. I mean, I mean, people can say that, but and, and unless you're you're using heroin on a daily basis, you don't know what somebody can take. Yeah, it's kind of a. That's a speculation that yeah. you couldn't do it. Right. Scary story about taking stuff at night. Um, <laughs> when I first started taking melatonin. Oh my God. Um, I didn't remember my first few trips to school, <laughs> driving <laughs> to school. And matter of fact, I actually ran off the road before. Like uh, I thought melatonin was very, uh, I thought it was very. Well, how many did you take, Tyler? How many melatonins was it? And I think the most I took up was like 40, gra- 40 milligrams of melatonin. That's a lot of fucking melatonin. See, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. It 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 will knock your ass out. I mean, it's, like, it's supposed it's to like, do? Like, yeah. It helps you sleep. It's a sleep aid. But so it's a natural it on your sleep way aid. to school? It took oh, it, no, no, you know, no. no. I night. took it. I, I, I would take so much, I couldn't sleep he at just all. Could, he had insomnia. Oh, so it would be in my system. I got you. I got you. It would be in my system. I was thinking you were popping them, getting in the car and going to school. Oh, God, no. No. So I vividly remember But I don't even know what it is. I don't know. Um. My head's up against the window on my on the car, like I'm literally resting on the window, right? And I hear, no, oh, and yeah. I open up, and there's dirt flying, like I'm, I'm in the median. There's mud right, right. just slinging, and there's cars way behind me. Yeah, so, so there's no telling how long I'd have been drifting down this road, just barely running off the road. So we'll go back to that. Thank er- God I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, though, we'll go back right? to that earlier comment when he talked about my hair falling out, and y'all wonder why. <laughs> It's really gray too. Because he hears stories like it's that. It's really gray too. So it's turning loose, <laughs> turning gray. What the hell? Uh, a couple other people I just want to touch on real quick uh, is, uh, in, you know, forgive my ignorance on these on these artists, but uh, it's uh, but they're but they're well known artists. Uh, Brian Jones, of course, co founder of uh, Rolling Stones, one of the original members. Yep. Uh, Twenty seven years old, he drowned. Uh, drowned in a pool. Uh, you got Ron Pigpen. I'm sure, he's completely yeah. sober. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ron Pigpen McKern, uh, yep. Grateful Dead, co- leading fa- one of the founders of Grateful Dead, uh, died of cirrhosis of the liver, had a huge alcohol problem. At 27. At 27 years old. I mean, do you know how much fucking alcohol you got to drink to die of cirrhosis at, at 27? 27? I drank a lot of alcohol when I was young. Yeah. But you I mean, was never close. Never come close to drinking never, that much. Never come close to having cirrhosis. I mean, that's cirrhosis. a lot of booze I mean, to be dying at 27. That's unbelievable. For that reason. Yeah. And you got Alan Blondell Wilson. He was an American blues band. Uh, you know, it's uh, he uh, played for Canned Heat. And these guys, uh, and unfortunately, forgive my ignorance again, but um, up and coming on the top of their game. Uh, this guy had a lot of mental illnesses, um, and he succumbed to a, a he attempted suicide a couple of times, and uh, and then he eventually died of a drug overdose. Uh, so you know that's some of the some of the main heavy hitters. Um, you go, and then another thing too, uh, the thing that I wanted to get into is the pop culture references in music, uh, in, in, it, you know, like I said, the 27 clubs, it's a, it's a, it's a very well known thing in, in music. Um, you know, you got fallout boy, uh, actually wrote a song. Um, Peter Wentz wrote the song, uh, due to his lifestyle, uh, wrote the song 27, uh, due to, due to the way he was living. You know, he thought he was going to be coming up next. Right. And you got Mac Miller, uh, song brand name, uh, and it the lyrics stated to everyone who sells me drugs, don't mix it with bullshit. I'm hoping to not to join the 27 club, right? Uh, and you was, know, was he 27? Mac he Miller passed? actually died of a drug overdose at 26 uh, due to a uh, cocaine and fentanyl fentanyl, fentanyl yeah. uh, mix. So um, Halsey uh, song colors. Uh, one of the lyrics is, "I hope you make it to the day you're 28 years old." Um, so they all reference it, uh, you know, and then recently, uh, last year, was the last year juice world or this year? It was, oh crap. I don't know. Sorry. I, I want to, I want to say juice world died it early, was last year. early. Okay. Late last year, juice world had died. I think it was before 2020 juice world had wrote a song called legends. In uh, love for beginning either one. Yeah. The, in the song legends, he, he references, uh, what's the 21 club or 27 club. We're not going to make it past 28, 21 or 21. <laughs> Golly, okay, you're right. Yeah. yeah, I wrote that backwards. So it's all good. What's the 27 Club? We ain't gonna make it past 21. And he was referring to what's his uh, little peep, little yeah, peep, little peep, and Mac Miller, and uh, and uh, extent. What's it? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, X. X. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, X had died. And he was murdered. He was shot in uh in 
in Miami. Was it Miami? Yeah, it was Miami. He was shot in Miami. He was uh, shot shot in his car. Shot in his car uh, coming out. He was uh, shopping. Shot in his car at 20 years old. And uh, Little Peep, uh, drug overdose at 21. Right. Uh, and, then, and then later on, like I said, Juice World had died of an accidental drug overdose at 21. So uh, it's... Accidental. Accidental. I mean, the, uh, the thing with Juice World was is he had a lot of marijuana on his plane. And well, he had a lot of marijuana on his plane while he was flying, like landing. And also he had um, a bunch of pills on hand and his plane was about to get searched. So what I think... Uh, he took all the pills, thinking he could stomach them and not get searched, but he ended up because his charge is going to be way worse with the pills, right? Yeah. As opposed to the marijuana, right. exactly. And so it, yeah. he thought he was going to be able to stomach the pills, and he didn't make it out. Yeah. And uh, you were saying about who was it? They were throwing him drugs and stuff, and he would just Jim Morrison. Him. Jim Morrison's his name. Well, kind of the same thing happened with Lil Peep. A uh, fan gave him a Xanax or something like that that was laced with fentanyl. And uh, that's what killed him, too. God, no, I didn't yeah. know that. A terrible thing, though. Kind of funny, morbid, terrible. But uh, one of the guys Lil Pete was on tour with, one of the rappers, he was, like, walking back through the tour bus with his phone. He's like, ah, I got my man Lil Peep chilling on the couch. He was totally dead. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. In the video. Oh, my God. Totally dead. Just wow. like, my man Lil Peep's chilling. Like, he was chilling all right. He was chilling all right. He was dead. But yeah, that, that's terrible. We talked a lot about, uh, you know, it seems like musicians. But have you have you have you mentioned Reggie uh, with the Celtics? What was his name? Was Reggie Reggie Lewis? I did not. Yeah, see, he was twenty seven. He died on a basketball court. Wow. Yeah, heart attack. He died on the court yep. of a heart attack. Twenty seven years old, ninety three. Nineteen ninety three. Yeah, I remember that. Nineteen ninety three. He was twenty seven. Yeah. I got uh, add that to the list. I actually, got Reggie Lewis's autograph. We played the Hawks. Really. Sure did. I don't on a remember, basketball. I don't remember me playing. Is it in our little? Is it in our little curio cabinet? It is. No, it's on a card. So actually, it's in a box of stuff. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, he was twenty-seven. Yeah, massive heart attack. Unbelievable. And I mean, he was. He was. He was an athlete. Absolutely, he was an athlete. He was a very good basketball player. Very good. Um, I wanted to go just kind of go over a list of a couple of people that you know. Just it, it was like to me, it was kind of a. I was like, wow, I didn't know that person had passed away. Um. You got Jonathan Brandis was an actor. Uh, he was an it in the Never Ending Story too. Uh, he was an up and coming young actor. He was in a Sequest. Yeah, Sequest exactly. Uh, in uh, two thousand three, he died of of an apparent suicide. If you don't know who that is, you'll if you look up his name, you will know exactly. You will know exactly who he is. Yeah, yeah you'll, you, it's a very recognizable face. That's right. Uh, you got uh, Anton uh, Yelchin, an actor. Um, he uh, played Chekhov in the Star Trek when they brought the Star Trek series back. Yeah. Um, Another twenty-seven. Yeah, died at twenty-seven, and, and it, this and this his accident was so crazy. He had parked uh, his driveways on an incline. He got out. I, I played to check the mail or lock the gate uh, at his home, and the car rolled back and pinned him against the rock wall, yeah. and it, uh, it it crushed his head, killed him. So crazy, twenty-seven years old, and uh, it's just. There's so many people, and like I was saying, that when I started researching this, uh, and, and we all know that we all know the big the big names. Uh, there's uh, there's a list of seventy five people, seventy five people, uh, seventy five famous people, seventy five famous people. I mean, it's it's unreal the people, it, and some I've never heard of, and some I'm just like, wow, you know, you got the basis of the Stooges. Uh, Al, uh, Dave Alexander uh, died of pulmonary edema, twenty seven years old. Uh, Jacob Miller, Inner Circle Reggae, uh, some one of the singers of Inner Circle, the reggae band, Car Crash. Uh, you got Peter DeFridis, uh, Echo and the Bunny Man, uh, Motorcycle Wreck, dead at 27. Also, uh, Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman, athlete, football player. Killed, killed by a friendly fire in Afghanistan. Yeah. I think yeah. it was Afghanistan. Yeah, he left his, he left his, uh, it was Afghanistan. He left his, uh, prolific, um, NFL, NFL career yeah. to go, to go get fire. shot at after September 11th. Yep. 27 years old and, you know, killed by friendly fire. You got uh, Chris Austin, uh, fiddle and guitar player for Reba McIntyre, uh -huh. died in a plane crash. 27. Um, and I'm going to say her name wrong. Uh, Kristen, I think it's uh, Poff, Poff, the bassist for Hole, which we kind of referenced Courtney Love. Uh, she died of a heroin overdose. 
So the list just goes on and on. And Post Malone, another, another Post Malone's twenty five right now. Post Malone, man, right now Post Malone is in a bad way, and he needs to get some people to get around him. I think. I, think I, feel, so I feel like he's 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 in a he's in that same group of folks that's just you know living life one hundred and fifty miles an hour. Yeah, his with lyrics, not too, wearing a seatbelt. Me and Kurt feel the same. Too much pleasure is pain. Yeah, and. And yeah, I mean he he's definitely in the same mindset as those as those people. And I mean, um, nobody's bigger than Post Malone right now. I know, you know and he's, he's it, and he can't handle. I mean, and I hope somebody gets with him and helps him. Like the videos of him on stage, just like totally just out gone. of gone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's kind of scary. It's just scary, man, because he's got a lot of talent, and I hope he's here for a long time. Yeah, you got to get these people around him and take care of him. It's Absolutely, yeah. you, you need to be yeah, you need to be surrounded by some good level headed people. When you're of that stature, but you know it's hard. I think when these guys get so famous and they get so rich, they're just throwing everything out. People's giving them everything they anything they want. It's 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 all it's all tangible. It's at their hands. The tangible. They can get anything they want, whenever they want it, and they probably don't like to be told no. That's right. They don't want anybody telling. I mean, hey, the problem I'm, is they're usually not told no. Yeah, yeah, very many people can't tell them no. Yeah. Another athlete, Tyler Skaggs. That was just last year, 2019, you played for the Angels. Yeah. They found him dead in his hotel room. Yeah. Unresponsive, and foul play was not suspected. Yeah. Well, uh, 27 years old. I think what happened, uh, they actually dug into that, and there was a trainer that was giving him uh, – You know what I think I do pain, from pain, that. Pain, pain, I don't know if it was – I mean, forgive me, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't – I don't know if it was Oxycontin. Was it oxy? Oxycodone. They were giving him oxycodone, whatever. So he was taking some sort of of a uh, um, an opiate, uh, an opiate, and and he, he overdosed, and so that's what killed him. Yeah, twenty seven years old. I don't know how old Felix Hernandez was, um, the pitcher. I don't know either. I think I think I don't even think he was twenty seven. He, he, was he wasn't twenty seven. He was younger. Just a young guy. It's just another you know another you know you got a young, rich, famous, uh, you know. He was the one that had the boat wreck. Right? They had. A, he was high on cocaine. Uh, and they they wrecked a boat in uh, in driving, Miami driving that train driving yeah driving that boat and it killed him so yeah hmm. that's I mean I don't know a lot of people that can handle that type of success at an early age when they everything's right there at their fingertips for them to and like we just said nobody's telling them no you better be surrounded by good people yeah you have to be if you're gonna survive you got to be surrounded by good people I feel like man. I feel like if Juice World did not ingest the pills and going back to saying nobody can tell you no, like I feel like the, it, the charges couldn't have been that bad, man. It wasn't worth your death. It ain't worth your death. I feel like, man, like you could have been bailed out, like anything. Like he definitely had the money, you know, he definitely had the money for it. Yeah, but it he, just wasn't worth his death. He wasn't going to live the lifestyle that he was accustomed to because he's going to go to jail for a while. Yeah, you were going to go to jail and for he, a while, and he, and he he wasn't willing to do that. No, that's true. He wasn't going to be riding those airplanes and, you know. Yeah, it's just sad all the way around. Well, it's not good, but... Uh, what know. a waste. You know, it's just, it's just such a waste. You know? Y'all uh, y'all ever listen to music for, like, the first time and you're like, ah, I'm not into this. I definitely don't like it. But, Absolutely. But um, upon second time listening to it and you come into it a little more open-minded... Is it, Florida Georgia Line dead? <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? Is it bad to say I wish? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, but, like, you listen to something for the first time... <laughs> Oops. And it's like the second time, like it's not like you like it. You, Their music career, you grow to like the music, right? right. Well, that's yeah. how I was with a lot of the music I listen to nowadays, and definitely for Juice World, it's I'm, one of my favorites. I'm ashamed to say that I was that way with the Rolling Stones. Really, I did not like the Rolling Stones when I was younger, mm-hmm. for whatever reason. And I loved old old bands when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But what a reason I couldn't just couldn't get the Rolling Stones. But now it? you appreciate it, right? I now love you, it. Yeah. Now I love it. That's the conversation I just had with him and U two. He because uh, U two's on Sirius XM now, and they get the U two channel. Right. I love U two. I love the. So does U two. Lo- I love the evolution of. Yeah, they do. But I love the el- the evolution where they started out. It was just punk and rough and just raw, and now it's all polished. And uh, I mean, you could see the progression, how they grew as musicians. And yeah. so Tyler was listening to it. And I was like, man, just give it a minute, listen to it. Cause, uh, cause you, I mean, you'll see that's a, that's a true talented band I to mean, be able to grow like, like I know that you, and stay on top. You know, you don't, a lot of bands can't stay on top. They're no, usually a couple of albums in and they're out or a couple of songs in and they're out, but if you can play for decades and that, stay on top. That's insane. And just, it's, it's insane. How long has the Rolling Stones played for now? Jesus, man. What are we talking about? 
What are we talking about? Peatballs. I can. I don't know. ACDC is the same though. Yeah. And I've seen ACDC live three times, mm. and none of the times where they were young. I mean, I mean, is it is it safe to say the Rolling Stones have been playing for seventy years? Is that fair? Uh, I don't know, but it's pretty funny to be. see sixty. Oh, man, like that's, you see that's pictures of artists. Up. That's something to Google fans from when they were younger. You know, and you're yeah. like, who are these guys? And then because you're so used to seeing the the now version of them, like yeah. they're all old, got gray hair, and that's one sad thing about ACDC. It's I've pretty seen, weird to think they used to be young. I, yeah. I've seen them three times, but I could go see them again, but. It's, you know, they lost a member. Yeah. And it's just not the same. But if you want to go see a fun, fun, fun show, it's ACDC. Okay. You're staying, there's no ballots. Yeah. There's no ballots. ACDC didn't They just punch you in the face the whole time you're there. It's from the time they could take stage to the time they get off the stage. It is so much fun. And you know every song. Mm-hmm. It is so much fun. Every time I've seen them, I've enjoyed it. You don't even have to be a huge ACDC fan to enjoy it because it's, you know, you know all the songs. Right. It's like... um. There's no boring parts. Yeah, you were talking about Amy Winehouse, how she sounds like nobody else, and stuff like that. Um, what it takes for music to be good nowadays is for everybody not to try to sound like one another. You know, be different. Don't try to make music that sounds like everybody else. That's, 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 that's the key. easy way. Yeah, that's the key. I mean, and that, I think that's, that's where country music's at right now. Uh, yeah, oh, that's, it's so it's, bad. Yeah, it's so bad right now. It's so washed up. But everybody who's successful right now is doing their own thing. And they're not trying to do what everybody else does. Country music is so bad right now. Now, I don't think it's really country music. I should say what's coming out of Nashville is terrible. Mm. But actually, there is good country music out there. But Somewhere. You have to find. No, it's 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 there, man. You just, I'm still looking, but it's somewhere. Well, I mean, there's some there's some artists out there that I really, I really do like. Yeah. Tyler Childers, yeah. love it. We touched love on the Country it. Music Hall of Fame. Did you listen to any of that I sent you? A little bit. Not enough to know, though. Come on, bro. I'm sorry, Ro- dude. Rolling Stones been around for 58 years. 58. 58 years. Unreal. And one thing yeah. about the Country Music Hall of Fame is they did not pay homage. Is it homage? Homage? What is homage. it? Homage. 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 They did not pay Porridge. homage Porridge. to the <laughs> to the blues, man. It was just like they, did not. they brushed over it. I mean, blues made everything, you know? It, yeah, you did. It's just that's where it all started. I I was um and I'll say this you know and we're kind of getting off topic but it's it's still music related and, and we love we all love music here um I was kind of disappointed with the Country Music Hall of Fame yeah. I, I I did not I was not blown away by it I saw some kind of cool things but I I kind of wanted more specific things from from certain people that I that I liked um they had they had a good thing on Willie Nelson and the Outlaws the Highwaymen that was pretty decent. Um, you know, you had saw saw some pretty cool guitars. Is that downtown? It is downtown. It's huge. The building's huge, but it's yeah. not. It, man, it's nowhere near what I thought it is was going to be. Uh, it's not. It's, it's or a new location. Yeah, I new, should say hey, it could be a new location. Because I've been in Nashville several times, and I've never seen it. Now it's huge. Maybe it's huge maybe I went right by. It, didn't even pay attention. But I will tell you this: my best money that I spent was at the Johnny Cash Museum. Without a doubt, man. It, I'm talking about. I was walking around in there, just like I was in awe of everything that they had. It's unbelievable the stuff that they had that was actually his. And they get his Nobel Peace Prize uh, uh, medal. They've got. I, uh, I mean, that. they've got actual memorabilia, real memorabilia, not some bullshit. It's right. yeah, it came off of his back. You know, it's like uh, it's like Cooperstown baseball, uh, like jerseys. I mean, they had his some yeah. stage yeah. wardrobe, and stuff in yeah, there. yeah. And they were talking about in the Country Music Hall of Fame. They had this one exhibit where it's like his uh, one of his vests or whatever. Yeah, it looked like a it, like it, a children's yeah, clothes. I'm like, this it is didn't, bullshit. No Johnny, Johnny did not Cash fit into that. that. There's no it, way. It was like a Johnny Cash Halloween costume. I think <laughs> that somebody had made, but yeah, they picked it up from Party City. Yeah, yeah no that's shit. what it looked like. But, <laughs> but I, I, Johnny Cash Museum's way better. I I love Johnny Cash, man, and and. Everything that he's, I mean, I'm just a big fan, huge fan of Johnny Cash. Yeah, and actual poems he wrote for his wife's funeral yeah. were there, you know, so it, handwritten yeah, notes. Yeah, so they it's had, just sad, like, man. June, when June had passed away, of course, you know, Johnny didn't live much longer. I think it was like two months later he passed away. Right. She was his medicine. She kept him alive. She was That's right. She was the good thing in him, you know, and, and he said that a million times, but... The, it, it, and it, seriously, I got choked up. I'm not going to lie, because what Tyler was talking about was it's her program for her funeral there. And then he'd went home and wrote a poem for her. And they had the actual poem that he wrote with his own hands, wrote 
beside her funeral, uh, her, her funeral program. It was right there. And then you go around the corner and you can hear, you can hear hurt playing. Dude, it gave me cold chills. And, uh, they had an actual chair that he sat in when he shot the video. The red velvet yeah, throne. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chair. yeah. And it had a bust of him, but the, but the video was playing over the, over the back of the chair, you know, Rick Rubin. There's a whole story with that. And man, God I, dang it, dude. I, I know, cold dude, that me too. It, like, it gets me choked up, but I, I seriously, I mean, we'll take some time. I'll, I'll do a whole podcast on Johnny Cash. I mean, it's, it, it's, he's such a, true icon a true american just uh, like an influence but but you some, know the only country music i mean I listen he's to. the only country music uh artist that uh punk musicians cover you that's know, right it's just but so but i now, walked around that corner and that that chair's there and then the, the song's playing and you you could see his face and he's just i mean he's at the end he's at the end and yeah the, the story on that was you know trent reznor had wrote that song uh and it was it was literally for uh someone a young guy who's experiencing a lot of hurt and pain in his life, you know, with it like, due to, to, uh, his, his, um, his it, depression it, yeah. and drug use. Okay. Well, Johnny wrote the song. Johnny re re did the song. Yeah, he changed a couple of things. It, yeah. He reinterpreted it as a, uh, as a man who's, who's came to the end of his life. And he's yeah. reflecting back on it. And Trent Reznor said, that's no longer my song. Yeah. Trent Reznor, like, and he was super cool about it. I mean, it was like, and, and the crazy thing is. Once Trent Reznor liked his, him singing it better than himself. Rick Rubin came to Johnny. He wanted to help Johnny to do this last album. And, uh, Johnny's kids was like, don't do it, dad. Don't do it. Don't let somebody, uh, don't do an album for somebody that can't, that won't respect your music, respect who you are. Oh yeah. And, and Rick was totally, he, he totally respected Johnny Cash. Yeah. Right. So when they did this thing and it got, it just went like a wildfire with all the other art, like a lot of other artists and people were begging, please, please talk to him. We want to work with him. Please just talk to him. Let us get in there. Uh, of course. But you know, like I said, Johnny was kind of at the end of his, you know, in the end of his life and he, he'd done everything he needed to do and he's ready to go home right. to mama June to drink coffee. Uh, it's, God dang it, dude. It makes me sad. And you see, and you, and you see that a lot though, when, you know, when, People are together that long, and one goes, the other one's not usually not far behind. Yeah, yeah. Johnny, I, I, I watched the same documentary or interview or whatever, but Johnny was having a hard time playing the song and, and just like oh, forming his holding the chords. Yeah, feeling the song yeah, feeling out. It, yeah, like uh, he just couldn't, he couldn't fit in. You know, the song he couldn't get it going. Yeah, and, uh, but when he did, man, it's just it's a great song, absolutely great. Yeah, and and, and man, we could talk about. Each one of these specific artists that we had talked about tonight, we could do we could do a a, a single podcast yeah. on every single one of them. I mean, there's so much to be said for these people and, and the things they've done and accomplished. And you know, uh, a lot of these guys we talked about tonight was in a very small amount of time. But you got Johnny Cash. He, I mean, he was you know he he was he he done his thing for a very long time. One and, more thing that uh, I think that maybe you didn't pay attention to, but you're talking about his age and how how. Um, how how he was at the end of his time pretty much, but his handwriting between the years of his life, like when he was younger, writing the notes and just really taking it in, how intricate all his words were. And then as he was older, you can tell he's really struggling with his hands and yeah. the notes are just sloppy looking. Yeah. It's just sad, man. It, it brings me down. Yeah. Hey, but yeah, he's by far one of my favorites. Absolutely. So. But look up the, uh, anybody that's listening to the podcast, look at the 27 club yourself and, you know, you'll see people that maybe we didn't cover that you're shocked by. It's amazing how many yeah. people, there's so many articles written on this 27 club. And, you know, again, forgive my ignorance on some of the things that may, that I may have left out, uh, didn't cover, uh, to the best that, that I could have covered, but it's just something that we feel like we wanted to talk about and get out there to you guys. Um, you can go to our website at www.cigarstoreidiot.com. And leave us some feedback, man. We'd like to hear from y'all. Let you know. Let us know. Let us know if there's a topic that you want us to talk about or discuss. Put it on there, man. We would we would be more than happy to yeah. review it and see if we can't get it in there. Get some merchandise up there. Yeah. Like, the also, we have too. gear in. We now. have merchandise now. I mean, we've got uh, baseball tees. We got t-shirts. We got uh, stickers. The hats will be in in about five weeks. Um, but I'm gonna post all that on our website. You can take a look at it on our Facebook. You can take a look at it on our Instagram. We also have a Twitter account. So, uh, and we are the only cigar store idiots. There's not another cigar store idiots. If you Google cigar store idiots, it's us and you can find us. Um, so again, we'd love to have some feedback from you. 
Uh, we'd love to get some ideas from you, some things you might want to hear, and uh, and I'd love to sell you some T-shirts. So uh, go ahead and take a look at all that, and I really do appreciate your time, and uh, and thanks for listening. Uh, Tyler? Absolutely. Thank you all for having me back today. A little rusty, getting back into the groove of things, but uh, good as always. And good Andrew, time. Andrew? Enjoyed it again, boys. Yeah, man, it was a good time. Thank you, everybody, again for listening, and uh, everybody... Take care. Keep on rocking in the free world. Yeah.